How are you doing YouTube? It's your friendly gamer Smart Entity here. Today I'm going to do a beginner's guide on mod priority. Now I've done a lot of specialized build Warframe videos. I've done a lot of optimized weapon modding videos on my channel. And some of the sort of questions some of the beginning players have been messaging me about is, you know, what if I don't have all the mods you've said? What if I don't have these mods maxed? Or what if, you know, I'm using a weapon that's not potatoed, it's only at rank 10 or rank 15? And what is the best setup I can have at this time? So this video is aimed at answering those questions. And to do this, I'm going to use a Brayden Prime. And we're going to have a look at these numbers here. I've got a, quite a few mod setups, and I've basically uh, transcribed all the numbers over here on a spreadsheet for easier comparison. Okay, so to begin, we have a naked Braden Prime. There is no mods in it, and basically this is what you get here. So 25.1 total damage output. Now, for the purpose of this video, don't worry about the physical damage types or the elemental damage types or the elemental combos. Uh, just focus on the total damage output. So for Naked Braden it's 25.1. Now if I were to add in a maxed Hellfire, I'm going to use maxed mods because the difference is more significant and easier or more evident to see with maxed mods. But even if your mod is not maxed, um, the principle stays the same. And you'll see what I mean by that shortly. So a maxed Hellfire gives you plus 90% extra fire damage. Now the word extra is actually very important. Um, basically this is what you get. So physical damage stays the same. You get 22.5 um, fire damage. So the total damage now is 47.6. And if you switch that for a cryo rounds, not surprisingly, you get the same result uh, except it's ice. But the total damage output is still 47.6. Now the interesting thing comes to this. So if you have a maxed cryo rounds and a maxed hellfire, the total damage output is 70.1. Right? So the physical stays the same and you get that 45 blast, which is your ice and fire combined together to give you 70.1. Now I have a rank 5 serration here, which is 90% damage. So these mods are 90% extra damage, this one is 90% damage, and this, I'll use this to basically show you what I mean. So if I take out one of these 90% extra damages and put in a 90% serration, so that'll be this one here, rank 5 serration plus maxed fire, the total damage is 89.3. That versus your max fire and ice being 70.1, may not seem like much, but as you put mods on, that would be an enormous and significant difference. And I'll demonstrate that here. So now we have Stormbringer, Quire Rounds, and Hellfire, all three elementals. And the damage, total damage output we get is over here, which is 92.6. Now if I were to replace the electricity mod with a Theration rank 5, so 90% base damage, the total damage output we get is over here at 131.6. So as you can see, the more mods you have, um, the more benefit from using aceration is noticeable or evident. So ultimately, what does that mean as far as modding priority goes? Basically, if you only have, say, 11 mod points, you know, it's perfectly fine to use serration or one of the elementals. In fact, sometimes it'll be better to use an elemental because they do have certain um, additional damage to certain factions. But if you have more than enough mod points for, say, two or more mods, so say if you got enough for two mods, then serration should definitely be one of the mods because the Hellfire or whatever other elemental you're using can actually benefit from the base damage provided by Serration. Now there are actually quite a few mods in this game that benefit base damage, so as far as modding priority goes, it's perfectly fine to have one extra damage mod in there at any particular time because that mod will benefit from all the other base damage mods, but you shouldn't put more than one extra damage mod on there unless you have all the base damage mods on there already because the two extra damage mods aren't going to benefit from each other. 
So assuming you have about say 10 hours of gameplay also, um, a lot of people would have serration plus at least a couple extra or elemental damage mods. So if you have serration in there and hellfire in there, um, the next mod you should put in would be something like split chamber. Now this mod is not easy to get. Uh, once you've been in the game for a couple hundred hours, you have more than enough. But for the first, say, you know, 20 to 30 hours or so, uh, this mod is not easy to get. Um, one of the best ways to get this is through 20 minute survival runs on solar map. Uh, or alternatively, if you do have, you know, a lot of plat, you can just buy one from um, trading chat for 5 plat unranked. And I would say about 20 plat max. Uh, depending on how desperate the other party is to sell it. Now the next mod you want on there, you know, it's debatable depending on weapon type, but as far as base damage goes, will be heavy caliber. Um, I definitely do not recommend ranking this too far up if you're a beginning player. Basically, as a rule of thumb, with rank 10, so serration, heavy caliber, redirection, vitality, I do not recommend a beginning player to rank it above rank 6. So that's not level 6, that's rank 6. So I have a rank 5 serration here, which is level 9, right? So, and the reason I said it is because anything above rank 6 takes a lot of cores and a lot of credits, and if you're a beginning player, uh, you're better off distributing those cores to other mods and distributing those credits um, to things like the foundry, um, or other sort of modding. Now if you are a new-ish player and you don't really have high rank uh, weapons in the sort of early stage of the game, it's definitely a good idea to, be, to put speed trigger on a lot of the weapons, um, just because that does help increase DPS noticeably when you are sort of more advanced, it's actually better off taking off that speed trigger and putting another damage mod in there because you don't actually need DPS because all enemies pretty much die with one bullet unless you're doing high level um, defense survival so you don't really want a speed trigger in there but that aside serration, split chamber and heavy caliber I would consider to be the speech mark essential in speech mark mods that you should have in all your weapons now there are some exceptions to this, namely with bow type weapons where you do want to land those headshots, uh, in which case it's fine to take out heavy caliber and put in some other mods. So ultimately at the end, you know, what you want to have with your top top weapon is obviously a potato and six polarities. Um, if you have four V polarity and two bar polarity that should pretty much cover all your bases uh, including normal and or crit damage builds. Now I've got the border prime here um, basically I got five elementals and the three essential mods. Now with regard to polarity which is probably something I should have mentioned initially is for those of you that don't know you want to match the polarity so the V with a mod polarity V and that will basically decrease a mod point requirement by half, round it up. If you put a mod polarity that's different to the slot polarity, that will actually increase your mod point usage, and that's definitely not something you want. Now with bows, the story is very similar. Um, basically, initially you want to start off with your serration, split chamber, and I would probably recommend something like speed trigger in all bows just because you do want to charge bow attacks and speed trigger will increase your charge rate and of course you want to have point strike in there before vital sense. There's no point having a high crit damage if you can't land the crits. So you want point strike in there to increase that crit chance and once you have that then put vital sense in there. Um, and then you can put your elemental on there um, one by one. Um, other thing I will quickly mention is if you do have a sort of a naked bow, you know, only with a few points, I definitely recommend putting something like Thunderbolt in there initially uh, to help rank that weapon because this one will cause a bit of explosive damage 
uh, will help you kill more enemies, gain more experience points. But after, say, you have more than 30 mod points, uh, you should definitely take Thunderbolt off because it doesn't give you enough damage. Because at the end, sort of your late game, uh, end game play, both are meant to be, you know, headshotting those heavy gunners, doing those single shots on sort of level 50, uh, you know, heavy gunner enemies. Now the principle works the same way with your crit type weapons, so things like your Amprex, your Soma, your Synapse. So you want, you know, Serration on there, and then you want Split Chamber, and then depending on your priority, you can have your Point Strikes or Crit Chunks on there, or your Heavy Caliber. And then after, you want to put your uh, Vital Sense, your Crit Damage mod on there. And then it's only after that, um, they can put your remaining sort of elementals on. Again, at any point, it's fine to have one elemental, but I definitely wouldn't put on a second elemental until all these other mods are on there. Um, you know, unless you don't have one of these mods, in which case, you know, it's obviously fine to put on another elemental. And with shotguns, you know, you want to put your point blank on there first, and then you want to put on your health chamber. And then you want to put on a mod called Blaze, which at max does 60% fire as well as 60% base damage. Um, I actually just sold mine recently, so I don't actually have one here to show you guys. But that is a Nightmare mod. Um, don't run Nightmare runs to get it. You know, it'll take you forever. You're better off just waiting for the alert uh, and then put it on there. But of course, if you are desperate for one, run some Nightmares or you can buy it in trade for 5 plat easy. And then afterwards, you want to put on your Vicious Spread crap mods. Now, I've had a few people, you know, saying Vicious Spread is quite damaging and doesn't really give you enough returns. But the truth is, shotguns are meant for short range, and despite the increase in spread, i.e. accuracy, um, the total damage definitely justify its place. But because of that spirit, you know, I would come in point blank first and health chambers and blaze and then put vicious spread. And yes, through some internet magic I managed to max this mod. Um the reason I didn't have a max before was because I actually sold a max mod um again just a while back, so there we go. And then after that, uh, you can start chucking on your elemental mods. But with it in shotguns such as a strong race, this weapon actually benefits a lot from a fire rate increase. Uh, so something like accelerated blast, um, plus 60% fire rate, plus 60% puncture. The 60% puncture is not going to help you out too much, but the 60% fire rate uh, will. And you don't actually notice too much difference between the 60% fire rate from accelerated blast versus the 90% from shotgun spads. With pistols, um, your sort of most essential mod would be Horner Strike, which adds base damage, and then it'll be Lethal Torrent or Barrel Diffusion. Barrel Diffusion is your split chamber equivalent. Lethal Torrent is a fire rate plus multi shot mod. Uh, these three should take priority, and again, you can have one elemental at any particular time, and it's only after these three that you should be adding your sort of second, third, fourth, and fifth elemental. Now, melee is quite an interesting one. There's quite a few different builds with melee, but the core principle stays the same. So, I have the do Icus here. Basically, pressure point is your base damage mod. That should be on there first. And then Fury. Now, all melee weapons benefit from Fury because without a ammo limitation and without the need to reload, increased attack speed is always helpful. Um, so these two mods should definitely be on there first. After that, I probably would recommend putting a elemental mod. So pressure point, furies, and something like fever strike or molten impact. These ninety percent extra damage um, mods. And then after that, you know, it comes down a lot to preference. I like spoil strike for that extra damage, but it does decrease speed. So if you are using a melee a lot, you know, you probably want to use this. Whereas if you're using your melee mainly for traveling utility, uh, you probably don't want to put this on immediately. And depending on the build, you, know, you can put more elementals, you can put crits, um, whatnot. But definitely put your pressure point on, your fury on, one elemental, and then possibly spoil strike. 
Now Sentinels is similar with one minor difference. Um, I sold my second max aeration recently, so I just have a um, rank four here. But you know you should be a max rank at some point. So the only difference is you do want speed trigger on your Sentinels, just because. You know, there's no reloading, there's no sort of ammo capacity, so you can't hurt to have increased fire rate. So your priority would be things like serration, split chamber, um, speed trigger, and then probably elemental, and then your sort of heavy caliber mod, and then, you know, the rest of your elementals. Alright guys, that pretty much concludes this modding tutorial. Now if you guys do want to see some of the sort of finished mods, um, I do have a complete weapons guide in there. I don't really talk much about modding, but I do show you guys complete modding of quite literally every top tier primary, secondary, melee modded, you know, maxed in the game. And I do also have an optimized weapon modding video. In that video, I do demonstrate, you know, generalized ideas on how to max mod um, weapons, etc. Alright guys, please like, comment, and subscribe, and if you guys have anything else you want to know, uh, please leave in the comments below, and I will try to do a video if I do get enough requests for them. Alright guys, cheers, I'll see you guys next time.